Apex isn't always easy, but that's why I'm here breaking down several clips from different Masters players and giving them my best advice on what they can do better and what they should also continue to do. If you want to learn how to improve at Apex, then this is the video for you. Let's go. All right, looks like they're going to the wall with one other team. Now, one thing that's important here is just really focus on where they land and try to cut off as much loot as you can from them. Looks like you guys are gonna split it. They'll each get two buildings, plus the bins that are on the outside of the building. But they're each getting one side respectively. All right, so we've got some great guns for an off drop fight. Prowler, wingman with a skull piercer and a sight. All right, I like that this player initially looked out and tried to gather that intel. Even just seeing one enemy can help gauge your next decision. Got a guy over here, looks like he's on the roof. Start shooting our teammates. Okay, about four seconds that was. What I would do if these guys are looking at my, uh, these two teammates are looking at this one guy, my first thought would be, can I isolate this guy? I'm a horizon, right? So I'm thinking as horizon. If a guy doesn't peek here, I would be jumping off the bridge. Even if I shot once, I'm fine with you shooting once, but I would jump off the bridge. I would use this big pillar here as to block this guy's vision. Plus he's still got to worry about my two teammates. But anyway, I'd get closer. I'd start lining this wall. And if a guy doesn't peek here, then I've got a queue up on this guy on the roof of my teammates, LOS. They could potentially just start walking up. But I just start, I'd start forcing this fight closer because the initial sequence of identifying one player in one specific area and their teammates might be lacking slightly because this is often what happens about solo queuing. And also in Masters, there's just people who just aren't fit for these lobbies. I'll just say that. But anyhow, just isolating this guy quickly. You know, and if a guy peaked here, like I said, you have this wall to play. And you also have a head glitch on the stairs. I would just get closer and I'd do it faster. Because if you start shooting here again and your teammates aren't getting a great angle, then guess what? His teammates are going to react like they are here. And now pushing could start getting more complicated. And that's one thing I worry about. One thing you'll see Apex Predators do is they move very, very fast. But I will give you somewhat of a pass because I know you're solo queuing. And while you're solo queuing, you're going to have to be more cautious at times. You don't want to be taking too much risk because you can't really count on what your teammates will or won't do. All right, so we got to be grateful the guy's still not on the roof here because if so, we'd be landing into him on 50 HP. We got taken aback by one guy here and one guy here. So we're down bad on that. But that kind of speaks to if we move faster, they probably wouldn't be as prepared for us. Now, I love this. This is really, really smart, guys. So take notes. This player gets on the roof, starts healing right away, only pops one cell. He's put himself behind a bunch of cover and on an angle where he got shot from this direction. So if they're going to climb up, he has some stuff in between them and himself. He's also flexible here because he could drop off if this started getting overridden with too many players, right? It's just, it's flexibility here. I like that. But most importantly, he uses his ears to gauge that somebody's climbing. And while somebody's climbing, they can't have their gun out. So while this guy's climbing up, he's trying to equalize as much damage as he can that he took. So he prevents this person's climb up. And he hits him for 86. Luckily, his teammate's here too to assist. But 86 is huge. Because now this guy has to drop down. And he got that damage when he was already low. So we've sort of created a stalemate in the fight. And I like that. And he's going to keep healing, which I also really like. <clears throat> Use that sound once again to indicate where you should shoot again. Octane right there. Hits him 45. Now, before I drop, I would pop one more cell and maybe even another syringe. Reason being is if I'm dropping, I need to be like 100% ready to fight because nobody's forcing me to drop. So if I'm dropping, I want to be ready. You started healing and her teammates started surrounding the enemies. I don't love the thermite and I'm going to tell you why. If you only have one thermite and all you know is that people are up here somewhere, putting a big question mark, we don't really even know. We know they're up here. So if we bank this thermite off this corner here, I'm going to give it a 15, 20% chance of doing anything. I think of a lot of things in probabilities. Okay. So if we're, if we're at that stage, what I'd rather do with this one thermite is get 
vision by being on the balcony. No, that probably doesn't make sense. But I get vision by being on the balcony because I can see through doors and windows and I can throw the thermite through either, presumably without taking too much gunfire. On the contrary, if I walk up the stairs with the thermite in my hand, that's not as smart as having my gun out, right? So if we throw it through the door or the window on the second floor balcony after we see where an enemy is, or probably creating an opening for our teammates to play off. We might also make this kill really, really easy because of the window angles, but I would bet that 15 to 20% initially then becomes 75% or so likelihood that this thermite is useful and maybe even like fight changing. Uh, there's a guy on your door, and I like this. You let this happen and see what this guy does. A lot of players don't know what to do around doors, and this guy just backed off of it, allowing you to swing open the door, hit him twice with the wingman while taking zero damage, and then you get to close the door again and watch them panic, apparently. While your teammate's down one, and then, yeah, the other teammate got the other the third guy. This was really good. Now, why this Pathfinder screwed up is he needs to play this door better, not just give up the door for free like he did, allowing this player to just walk in and then use the door hinge as cover, sort of. And he has a better peat gun with the wingman. This guy had a Spitfire, it sounded like. Yeah, Spitfire is not a good door gun in this regard. A good fight. I like the patience you showed on the door. I like the fact that your teammates also did the right moves by swarming these players on the other sides through the windows and the other entry point on the door over there and um i liked your healing and your shooting while they climbed up so good work i've definitely been here that wingman just ain't hitting you gotta be careful We only have one bat. Now we're going to have no bats and one cell. I don't love this. I'd hit a syringe too. I, I wouldn't really be. Don't love this play. Hello. How does that happen with our teammates right here? This is a little perplexing. If I was this player, I'd be... What the... F All right. Well, let's see what happens. I hate these buildings in Stormpoint. They're just so awkward and there's so many different angles. They're not good to hold at all if you need to hold something. I'd pop my one cell for sure. I wouldn't be. Yeah. So one thing we got to do is just, I, I know it's only 25. But like that extra 25 could be game changing. You know, so just pop that one cell and then look for something. And that way you do everything in your power, right, to to then take on an enemy. Nobody's forcing you to fight right this second. So you've got a few seconds to pop that one cell. And I definitely would have swapped this right away. This guy's one. One guy runs out the door. Okay, now we hit the swap. Good. Now you gotta do something for me next time, bud. You gotta spam the shields that you're looting in the box. You have one cell. If you kill this, get this swap. Get this. Get this. Get all of this. Right? I, I just don't love to see that. There's no hurry. No hurry. Great shots, though, on this guy. Ah, okay, nice. All right, hit him with the finisher. Love it. Love it. Please get shields from this player. Please, thank you. Okay, good. All right. I went from really bad to really good. I don't know how that Pathfinder snuck in, and but uh, sometimes you notice how it goes, right? Like, teams fight, and somehow your team is just unscathed in a way. Like, they get the reset, and then... It's always super frustrating, though, when you're one of the two teams fighting. <laughs> you're like, why didn't they fight the other team? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast forward a bit. Okay, we're later on in the game. Not much has happened since. 
We've got 10 squads. Checkpoint end zone. We're kind of pulling to the lower side of checkpoint at the no-name buildings. Taking high ground. Teammate gets absolutely messed up. Good ping to let your teammate know. So I would not drop. Um, let's see what happens. Okay, here's why I wouldn't drop. Actually, I'm just going to explain it. All right, nuances are important. You guys hear me talk about this all the time, right? So if this guy got shot, we're going to assume it's this building, right? The one you end up pinging. If it's that building, look at your teammate. He's here. You want to hold this line. I'm putting it at the top of the roof. But basically, this structure should be yours to hold, okay? And you really want to hold this to the point where they don't push. If they push, then you might have to drop. But if you who are as healthy, and Loba, who is healthy, can even just put any gunfire down on any players here at this house, or just get the vision to see, are they pushing? That can then gauge your next move. You don't want to just drop off the height for free, because you got the res, and nobody's at this door right this second. So for all you know, one guy is only running in the open, and you might get some good shots on him. It actually might like turn the tables, right? So you just want to be a little bit more sturdy here don't panic and just drop off now you might have had your reasons but even while you're solo queuing if you back off this you drop and your teammate gets re-knocked because they push and you're not there it's really hard to get back up there and your teammates might not think about dropping off let's see okay he gets down to a prowler that tells me i would think close range then your other teammate drops you get some shots. But in most realities, right? In most in most games, these guys are dropping off. This guy's probably already thirsted. And this three man is running at you, right? So I understand these guys are playing it a bit more passive. And Loba's already going for the revive again. Maybe you're just shooting to, hey, look at me type of thing. So they don't drop on them again. That's fine. Now, first off, your teammates shouldn't even be getting knocked up there, right? But in reality, you just don't want to give up this high ground so easily. You want to hold this and just think about, okay, where would they come from, right? Take out abilities for a moment. Most likely, well, not most likely, 100%. If no abilities, they have to leave this house, drop down to that lower platform, walk here, and then start walking up. And there's two stair sets, right? Which you have elevation over. You've got an angle at this door, and you've got two double doors to play here. So you've just got some, some ways in which you might prevent this push, buying this guy time to heal. And like I said, the fight could turn into your favor all of a sudden. So just don't panic drop next time in a spot like this. Okay, so now we're rotating. Not a heck of a lot happened with that, by the way, anyway. So it's not like you didn't miss much. All right, we're walking into zone. We actually have a pretty good edge spot. Okay, I understand clearing your back, but I don't like shooting that guy and then turning my back. You just dealt 60 to him, and you took zero damage. So they have the better ground with the building in my eyes. So you are you have less space here in this little triangle. I get watching your back, but I wouldn't shoot them. I'd do one or the other, most likely. Or I'd just shoot that guy and move up on him and just chance that nobody rotates behind us. Because once again, a good team could hold you out from better spacing. And you might also get a kill on that Bloodhound for hitting him 60. All right, we got a res right in front of you. And you're looking for something. I don't know what. I would definitely be looking at the res ship and seeing how many people dropped. And can I get some free kills? It looks like that's what your Pathfinder teammate's doing. I know you have some bats. And you've got plenty of ammo. Nice. Don't love this decision. Why I don't love that is like, sure, you could use that to maybe get him out of there. But he's got a lot of different cracks and crevices he could be in. So we're thinking of probability. What I'd rather have is that if I drop down and want to kill this guy. I'd rather have my Q available. This guy took that for some reason. I think probably to shoot your teammate. Nice job. Clean up. 
Okay, good. I wouldn't want to be stuck here because if any other good teams here, they could keep you guys low ground. Coming up could be difficult. There was a team holding. Or Loba could get crapped on and then you guys are all low ground. Good. Get some of those nades. I like that. Hmm. Right, we got a top four situation. Everybody's full team. Looks like a team behind that tree and everybody else. But the other two teams are playing this building. Save some of my ammo. Uh, use, a, use your bat. Or your phoenix kit. Get this done sooner. And heal your health. You haven't healed your 25 bar of health here. In a while. And it's bothering me. Get that taken care of. You want to be fully healed if you have the time. And you have the heals. All the time. There's nobody pressing you, right? Like, it's not like you got to shoot somebody right now. Providing some presence is fine. But just get fully healed up for that eventual last battle. There will be a last stand and you want to be fully healed for it. No, no. Okay. I thought you were trying to throw that at them again. See, I don't love this, once again. All right, I, I think this the, the real short answer is closer is better, okay? You want more vision. You want more chance that this, with the grenades, is going to do more damage, right? This, once again, is like a 15% probability it does something. And frag grenades kind of suck with the horizontal because one frag actually blow up the horizontal with some gunfire it does 100 damage max right so yeah you just got to be careful with that but also like you can't see a little a lot of this because this mound this mound kind of blocks and even when you're in your queue look at what's happening we see one guy there underneath this horizontal it's not the worst all right, let me take it back. 15% might have been low. Maybe we're at 25%. But you're not in a good spot to play off a lot of the damage. You're still worried about three other squads. What I'd rather do is save this where I get closer and there's less space. Think about this circle. Look at this circle space. It doesn't look like a ton of space, but in reality, it's still a good amount. What happens when it gets like this big? Right? We might have shrunk the circle by 40%. Then that horizon ult's value goes up. Same with those two frags. So just holding onto it a little bit longer might have been the best move. Now this is good. You can kind of bully all these teams in these houses, or this one part of the house, I should say, and gatekeep them in a way, as long as nobody does anything too dumb. Good job taking this time to heal. Be careful landing in the zone. Nice, this is good. Good swap, nice. Yeah, like imagine a horizon ult here. I know there's a Watson, so maybe there's a gen, but I don't, I can't tell. But even if you put it somewhere here, like that would just kill these guys. It would kill the guys down low too. Like this, that's what I mean about the horizon ult, just being a little bit more conservative with it, and the value would skyrocket. Now this is a smart move, guys. Look what he's doing. He's using his knockdown to block these players in the door frame while the zone's closing. Really, really smart. And now they have to waste a bunch of ammo while taking zone damage, making these kills theoretically much easier for 
his teammates, hopefully. Hey, this guy's like trying to die to zone or something. Oba had the best position there. Good. Uh, really well done. You know, like I said, there were some small things that I'd say I would do differently for future games and just for future better habits where opposition might be much better, right? But overall, good game. And uh, you showed a lot of good habits and, and good qualities that a lot of players should look to implement or improve on. All right, we got game two right here by another Wait player. Greatness. Greatness 47. Yeah, Gun out, gun out. Rather have my gun out. I'm way more efficient with my gun out, especially in a close range combat. Chucking a nade through a window, chucking and or holding the nade here. Lower probability. Lower probability that you're gonna be as efficient with this as you could be with your gun. Made you miss out on damage here by taking a gamble, right? This guy just walked up, one clipped this dude. Took no damage. That could have been you. I got some energy. Nope, they're okay. Nice job. Nice spray right here. There's some over here. If there's two down there and you're here fighting here, right? You got to assume three teams. The team you just downed, a team fighting them, and yourself. So I like the decision to go in and go up. High ground is awesome here. The fact that this just bled out basically tells me that they just finished winning the fight. This team up here. I don't like this. I love the knock, but you got shot by two and look at your health, 50 HP. Look where your teammates looking. Third one ain't even with y'all. This guy's coming around. You need to get back in that door frame, start healing. This is what we call an ego chow. And it works, but I don't really think it's the best habit. That guy had to only hit you for 50 and he failed to do that. He got you to 49, basically, or 1 HP. But most players in Masters lobbies will be able to hit 50 damage before you have to hit 150. So we want to practice those habits of just playing a little bit safer. Let your teammates come in for reinforcements. You're, I'm not saying bail, just play the door. You got some space. And time to heal. Oh, what? Yeah, this is insane. This is an insane angle if people don't know. Windows. Remember, Apex designs all these buildings with usually the ability to access the enemies inside through the windows or the window sills. I don't know why that Horizon fails. She should be shooting this guy so you don't get thirsted. Oh, uh, that's tough. Very frustrating. Very frustrating. Now you got 50 seconds on zone round three. Good amount of space. Seven squads. Two players are missing. Yep, team is still there. Good shot. Nice shot. Oh, Guys, this guy needs to heal, oh, man. Playing with fire. Not sure what your plan was there. I'm not sure either. All right, now round's closing, right? So that's how quickly 40 seconds pass. You get distracted with the team, boom, boom. All of a sudden, you got to move. But you got to move with them now, too, right? And they're shooting your evac. So you got to move in. They got to move in. And we don't know. I'm just going to kind of recreate the circle over here, right? We don't know what the heck is in here. So we need to get vision out there. And we need to start thinking about what we can play. Now, as Wraith, think about your portal. You're the navigator here when it comes to distances and getting into zone. Horizon can navigate you up and onto some, some buildings or, or roof or some high ground, like whatever. But she can't get you into the zone like this. That's where Wraith needs to be thinking. What am I porting into? You don't worry about shooting them now because you're just like, this isn't a sniper. I mean, yeah, technically it is, but it's a pistol. So you're not going to really do anything here. And you still, even if you are, you're not playing for six, you're playing for first. 
So start thinking about getting in and potentially getting in front of them. That team is still crossing right there. Even a couple of seconds of your attention isn't worth it. Look how much further ahead they are than you for 41 damage. Not worth it, right? And you got another team looking at you from here. There's another team. I think we have to take this. Let's go over there. You do, but you have to start going. I would just port them. I'd throw a heat shield at where you are and oh, start porting them and get so in somewhere. I think walking in late like this is like risky because you, you got to factor in running into somebody. There's and here we go. Here. Good spray, but you got to keep moving forward. I'll go down. I wouldn't, I would not have climbed up. I would just move forward and lined them underneath. Because now look, someone's behind you. Your teammate's getting crapped on. The other teammate has to challenge. This guy's gonna get left behind, you're gonna queue. So you're just gonna die, get jumped on. It's just like, we could've avoided this mess by portaling or just taking space. Now I think it's not worth fighting it, yeah. Well, now you port, but it's way too late. So I know you're solo queuing and it's always tough to gauge like, hey, what are my teammates thinking of doing? Will they come along with me? But I think if you make it to this stage in a game and you're running open mic and your teammates seem somewhat competent and they're not, you know, working against you, it seems like you guys are working together, they'll they'll hop in your port, right? They'll, they'll be down with your plan, especially if they don't really have a good secondary option because the evac's gone, nobody else has one. So just trust your instincts, be like, hey, I'm gonna port us. And at the very least, even if they don't take it, well, you've probably secured potentially a way into zone safely for yourself. And that's what's most important while you solo queue. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out the best and worst ultimates for every legend in this video right here. Thanks for watching. Peace.